Could I convince anyone this is made in America, that with all American parts? <laughs> <laughs> or how about Germany? <laughs> yeah, made in, and in German engineering, made in Germany. <laughs> it's the Volkscopter. <laughs> This is me, RC, and I'm Dave. And I'm John. And uh, I just got back from the RC Sailors Fest. That's why I got this shirt on, and I got one for John, too. And of course, my wife, Laura, was there as well. So, hello to the RC Sailors, if they're watching this. We just got these drones from you, and we really appreciate the great prices that we got on those drones. Now, this one here is one that I won during a contest. And I've got a clip for that. This is my Commodoreizer 64 effect. Okay, Dave won a drone. Yes, I won this drone in the spot landing, and it's a Kumi, I think. Dad's been Commodoreized. Okay, so I landed on the spot and won this drone, and I'm going to do a little review on that. I actually purchased this one from RC Sailors. This was one that they reviewed. It's called the Fly, or the Sea Fly Obtain, and it's kind of like a Mavic. And I'm going to do a comparison with my Mavic later on this one. But uh, we bought this one too, or my wife did, and this is going to be her drone. And this is the Zero Explorer V. And this is a great aerial photography drone. I think she's really going to enjoy that. And we may do a review on that later as well. Performs very much like the Mavic in, in many ways. Has a great 4K camera and has good range on it. So we'll talk about that later in another video. Okay, now let's get into this one. This is the Kumi K200C. Go so for the spot landing. <laughs> get that out. Yeah, that's the, that's the trophy. <laughs> There's the controller. Actually has a pretty good manual. I read through it and it seemed to be pretty good. Okay, the motors are here so they don't spin too well. And then we've got all this other stuff here. It's got, you'd say these are brushed motors, right, John? I guess they would be brushed, wouldn't they? Brushed, <laughs> geared motors. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. what about the weight? I, I the weight's really lightweight. So 105 grams with the battery installed. So that's definitely under the FAA weight limit of 250 grams, so you don't have to register. Looks like a 600 milliamp hour battery right here. 600 milliamp hour there's, one cell. And there's the camera. Yeah. To get the battery in there, you have to kind of push back on the camera. Well, that sucks. <laughs> Wait a minute, this is supposed to be family material here. Family orientated. We can't say words like sucks. <laughs> but anyway, this door opens up and as you can see, it's like on a hinge. So there is the compartment inside. And there's the cable for it. <laughs> what are you doing? Okay. I'm picking. All right, so anyway, here is the, here's the battery, and you just slide it in. Now I'm cracking up too much, and I can't get it the job done. Anyway, it's kind of fiddly, but once you get it just right, it goes in. Can you see it now? There it is. Okay, and then you connect these two wires to get it started. And then just close the door back up. Oh, that reminds me, it has a... Uh, it has a switch on it right there. So that's kind of nice because you can turn it on and off. You can put the battery in there and then cut it off until you're ready to fly. So that's, that's nice. It comes with a spare set of props here, a little battery charger, and a screwdriver. That's what's in that pack. And some extra screws, it looks like. Is that what that is? Extra screws? Yeah, yeah extra screws right there. Now let's get into the controller. Mm -hmm. So this is the controller here. So what do you think of that controller? Well, it looks like a, a 
to a game controller. And why is the antenna hanging out like that? Oh, that's because of this. If you take a look at that right there, that is the little phone holder. It's a yeah. phone holder. And that phone holder plugs in there. Let's see if you can get that in there. Let's see how hard it is. I haven't tried it yet. Oh, just snaps right in. How easy can it be? All right, let's see if the phone fits. Oh yeah, so it'll fit a standard cell phone, no problem. Just like that. Actually, I don't know if you call this standard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a big case around it. Oh, I wanted to mention on the uh, camera right here, this is, it looks like a 5.8 antenna, like 5.8 gigahertz, like it would be used with goggles or something, but it's actually Wi-Fi, and it says Wi-Fi right on the box. So the camera is Wi-Fi, and the video signal goes back to the phone. Oh, I got it. And it's got uh, a big click on it. That's all it does. But now the drone itself is not Wi-Fi. Flying the drone with a controller, you use the controller sticks and all. And I'm not sure you can fly the drone Wi-Fi at all, but it's got better range if you use the controller anyhow. So it comes with a spare set of blade guards. And uh, they... Is it spare or is it just the ones? Oh, you're right. It is the ones. That's right. They're not spare. Uh, so it has two pegs on each blade guard and they plug into these two holes right there. Now I'm going to open up the manual and just look at this, which gives you okay. what the different buttons are. So I'll I see something that could be a 3D print job. You do? 3D look at print? that. Oh, because it, it just down. flops over, huh? Yeah, it might be good to have a little stand that could like prop this up when you set it down so it doesn't Kunk on you. I see you got it tilted a little bit. Yeah, I was able to tilt it. It just got a really stiff click thingy on it. Oh, uh, so it's just a stiff click thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because it's so heavy. You yeah, know. it is a heavy cell, cell phone. Okay, yeah. let's just go over the uh, controller a little but bit. But it's here. bad when you try to click it into place because you have to hold this guy so you don't break it. Well, maybe <laughs> you use the drone to hold it up. <laughs> That's it. The drone holds them, but then you couldn't fly, right? Yeah, that's right. So what are these batteries for? It can use other batteries. I found out I had some from a Dromeda hover shot. They also work. These are 650 milliamp hours. And even though they're a different shape, there's plenty of room in the battery compartment and they will slip right in. Mm -hmm. And you can see these batteries are Rise batteries, so they could work. But you can order the same battery that comes with it as well. Or, okay, uh, here's a little clip of where you can order the batteries. So here's a battery and charger combo that I found on Amazon. And it's currently available right now for $11.99. However, it's a little bigger battery than the one that goes in the quad, but it should fit. The one that really works is this one right here, but it's currently unavailable. So you might have to look around on Amazon and see what you can find. I'll put a link to this one underneath the video. So this is a really, actually a very good controller. I've, I've flown it already and the sticks are very responsive and easy to use. They, they fit your thumbs well. They'd be good for pinchers as well as just normal thumbers. And uh, yeah, it flies good and there's a lot of control with those sticks. To turn the radio on, you just press this button in and it actually goes in and stays in and the red light comes on right here. So, uh, and then to turn it off, you just push it and then it pops out. Now it's out and the light's off. Okay, just going over some of the buttons. It does supposedly do flips. It has a bumper button here that actually says 360 on it right there with some arrows. You can see that? Yeah. And you can see it in the instructions there too, right here. All yeah. So if I get something wrong, you let me know. But that's, so the idea is you push this button and then you can move this, the cyclic stick anywhere you want, any direction to make it flip in that direction. So that's that one. And then over here is the rate. This is the bumper button for the rate. And then you have some buttons here. You got a one touch takeoff button right here. It has a little circle with an arrow up. And a one touch landing button right here with a circle and an arrow down. But anyway, that stop button there will cancel the takeoff or landing. And then these two on the outside here are actually trim buttons. So you can trim the stick right here for the yaw. So these are your yaw trim buttons right there. And this button here is headless mode. It looks like a little 
star that's headless mode you know where it doesn't matter how the the yaw is orientated it'll still move you know according to the cyclic stick back you can go back forward left right but it doesn't matter which way the quad, the quad is aimed in headless mode so that's headless I'm mode i'm surprised it didn't put a little figurine yeah. of a guy <laughs> without his head yeah they should have but it doesn't it just it just looks like a cross with a quad in it little circle with a quad and then this one here is actually returned to home and uh, you know that's I might try that I don't know how good that'll work but that's returned to home and then over here on this one what do we got here so these are the trims you know for left right yeah. forward and back and then once the reset is the middle one yeah the one that says okay is actually reset so you probably don't want to hit okay unless the quad isn't behaving right and then you can hit that to just reset the uh, trims or whatever to get the trims back and then what do these two buttons do uh, oh photo. video not for Wi-Fi version photo not for Wi-Fi version okay it says video photo not for Wi-Fi version so that makes sense since we have the Wi-Fi version for the camera they're talking about the camera that we will have to initiate the video or the photo on the phone in the app and the app you can get from the store, I didn't, I put that thing back in there, but there's some of those little, uh, what do they call them, UPCs or? No, uh, what are they QR. Called? QR codes, yeah. QR codes that are on the uh, instructions, and you can just, with a QR reader, read them on your phone, and it'll take you to which app. And there's like one for Apple, there's one for, you know, the iPhone, Apple iPhone, there's one for Android, and uh, so you can pick the one you want which phone you want. QR codes make things a lot easier once you know how to use them. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually downloaded a QR reader app and they're easy to install from the Play Store. And then you can just read the QR code and it gives you the link where you can download the software. So I think that's about it. Oh yeah, we did discuss the batteries that are on the back here. And there's a screw you gotta take out and then there's three AA batteries. And my understanding is you could use rechargeables in there, but uh, they will be a lower voltage. I don't know how that affects it. Well, you could use the, uh, nic the um, nickel zinc modern batteries that they have now, mm -hmm. but you'd have to put one dummy in there because there's such a high voltage. Yeah, that's true. That, that yeah. could work. Yeah. It'd be something to experiment with. Yeah. All right, we're going to go out and test fly the Kumi K200C. And I've got the phone on here, and I'll go ahead and start the app when we get out there. Right now, the phone is just on. All right, let's go. Okay, first thing, I'm going to turn on the switch and get the drone going. The lights are blinking, as you can see. Now, there's no GPS on this drone, so we don't have to wait for GPS satellites or anything like that. All right, now let's go ahead... Uh, I'm not going to connect the phone app just yet. What I'm going to go ahead and do is turn on the controller, like that. And the light should blink rapidly and then stop, which they did. Okay, now let's bring up the drone app here, which is called JUFO. J -U -F -O. So I'm going to bring that up. I'm going to go ahead to play. Let's see. All right, so it's not ready yet. We're going to have to connect the Wi-Fi. So I'm going to pull this down. Get that gear icon on my phone and find the KMUFO connection right here. Click that and connect. Obtaining IP address. Connected. All right, now that it's connected, we should be able to go back and now we've got a picture with the drone right here it's working not a bad picture okay first let's initialize the drone what we do is you push the stick up oh I hit the bumper button <laughs> let's get out of that rate okay we move the stick up and then back down and get a beat now let's see if it'll go to the outside and fly there we go. Now we should be able to lift off the ground. Yep, there we go. 
Okay, let's try our first button, which is auto land right here, this bottom button. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it down a little lower and then hit auto land. And you can see it landed right there. All right. Now let's try this next button. This is auto takeoff right here, this top button right here. Auto takeoff. Just press it once and then it'll lift right off the ground. Okay, well, let's get right into it. I'm going to show you Return to Home. Now, Return to Home does not have a GPS function or anything like that, so it will just start coming back toward you and it'll fly right by you if you don't move the stick or press the button again, you know, press the return to home button again. Okay, here's return to home. All right, you can see it coming back. And it's just going to fly right on by me if I don't hit a stick. Oh, I also hit a bumper button and did a flip, so that was a bonus. So, yeah. Now I'm going to go up on the rates by hitting this button. That gives me a little more... Agility. I need more agility because I was flying into the tree and the wind was blowing me in there. So I went to the second rate. There's only two rates, high and low. Okay, coming back. I'm going to take it out of high rates now. The wind is fighting me. I'm going to go into high rates just a little bit here. Okay, high rates. Here we go. Now let's try the bumper button. I'm going to press it. Pull the stick. And you see it automatically goes up in the air when you do it so it doesn't lose altitude. Just press the button, move the stick any direction, bring it back. you got to do it quick. There we go. Now, I didn't lift it up in the air. It did that all by itself. So that works really good. This button that says stop, it actually stops. It'll drop right out of the air. Watch this. I'm going to press this middle stop button. I'm going to hold it. Look at that. And you can see because it's ABS plastic, it doesn't do any harm to it. It's just so light. I think we measured it at 110 grams. So it just plops back in the grass, no harm done. So that was the stop button. So you don't want to press that if you're over water or something like that, you'll lose it. Now this OK button here, it just centers the trims. So I'm going to take off again. This time I'll use the pull the sticks to the outside and use the throttle to bring it up myself. Now I think it's still in the high rates. Yeah, I'm going to put it in low rates there just for a second. All right. Now, if I press this center OK button, that's it. It just levels it basically. It does have altitude hold, as you can see. It pretty much holds its position. Once in a while you have to tweak the throttle. So I think I've tried all of the buttons now. Let's see. Oh, there's headless mode. Okay, let me bring it back here. I'm going to put it in high rates again. Okay, bringing it back. All right. The wind's just fighting me. Okay, I'm going to do headless mode. That's this upper button on the left right here below the stick. Press that. Now it's supposedly in headless mode. So I should be able to, like, turn the yaw. And see, it's sideways to me, but it's still, the sticks perform like forward and back and all that. So it doesn't matter which way it's facing in headless mode. You can still just move the stick back and forth to come in and out, left and right. So basically that's headless mode. And to get out of it, you just press the button again and you're out of it. So, pretty simple. Alright, let's just fly it around. I think we're in high rates right now. I think I'm just going to leave it there because, you know, there's too much wind. Now I'm in high rates, so let's just see the yaw there. The yaw is still kind of slow. Maybe I'm not in high rates. Seems like it though. Yeah, I think I am. Wouldn't come back that quick if I wasn't. Okay, so it's got kind of a slow yaw as you can see. So no, sp no sporty maneuvers with this. You're just going to be flying around about that speed. 
All right. Coming back. The wind taking me now. Coming forward. So this is a good thing to practice if you're a beginner. Just see if you can go in the circle. And it's one of the hardest things to do for a beginner is to fly in a circle. Especially with limited space like I got. <laughs> if I was out on the golf course I could do a great big circle. But I'm just doing a small circle here. And you can see this has been running the whole time on one battery. I'd say the flight times are going to be about seven minutes. And when the battery runs out, the motors will just slow down and it'll land. So it's doing that now, I think. Yeah, it's doing that now. So now it just landed because the battery's low. You can see the lights are blinking on and off slowly. That means I got a low battery condition. So I'll have to put another battery in and just take some pictures or take a movie to show you how the camera works. But, with it in that condition, will it take off? Let's try the auto takeoff right here. Okay, it's still working, but it just goes right back down on its own and lands. So, definitely a low battery. So let's go ahead and change the battery. Alright, let's go ahead and turn the quad off. And then I'll turn off the transmitter. That's the proper method. Okay, now I'll move the camera out and let's just go ahead and change this battery. I can feel the battery's warm. They recommend not charging it when it's hot like that. Let it cool off. Now I'm going to use this uh, Rise battery that came with uh, another quadcopter I had. Let's go ahead and put that in. This is a, 60, a 650 excuse me, milliamp hour. And it's not going to go back in there as far, but it's, it's longer. However, it still works. So that shows you the versatility on this on the batteries. I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. All right, it's in there. Now, since we're going to take some pictures, let's go ahead and connect to the Wi-Fi again. I'm going to turn on the quad. Uh, yeah, we'll turn on the quad. And we'll go ahead and turn on the transmitter. All right. Okay, there it is. Okay, it says connected, actually. All right, let's go back. See, yeah, I got a picture. Okay, now what we want to do is record, and we got one icon here for record video and one for record a picture. So that's what we want to do. Now there's two buttons on this controller, supposedly to record a picture and take a movie, but they don't work because I got the Wi-Fi version. When I do them, nothing, that should be taking a movie, but it isn't. I can see by the icon it's not taking a movie. Okay, so I'm going to have to tap these icons to take a movie. Okay, let's see if we can do a takeoff. Do the auto takeoff. Let's see. Oh, I forgot to initialize. Make sure we're in low rates. Okay. Auto takeoff. There we go. Okay, let's get it out here a little bit. I'm going to raise it up a little bit. That camera is tilted down. Don't know if you've noticed that. Okay, now it's facing towards me. I'm going to have to work the sticks backwards. All right, get it up a little higher. Oh, I tell you, that wind. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and hit the movie. All right, we're supposedly recording. All right, I'm going to bring it back in here just to get a video. Yeah, it's recording video. All right, here it comes back. All right. trims are crazy right now. I'm going to give it a little trim here to see if I can stop it from going left like that. That's a little better, but I think the wind's just swirling around here. All right. Let's just see if we can fly it around. Now they got a new battery. Have to keep bumping the throttle stick up, make sure it doesn't fall. Okay. There we go. 
doing a nice circle. Really helps to have a good battery in there when you're trying to do maneuvers. Otherwise, you can even fly on a low battery. Okay, so it's doing pretty good. I'm still recording some video. There we go. Jump a little higher now. Maybe you can see the surroundings better. So this is 720p on this camera. It's not 1080p or anything. After all, this is only a $50 quad. I think it does pretty good considering the durability, the ability to record video, and all the special functions that it has. I really can't complain. I've crashed it in a tree several times and drove it into the ground and still no damage. So I'm really happy with it. All right, let's bring it back down here. All right, I'm going to go into uh, that first rate, the beginner mode, and just bring it back over here. Bring it lower. All right, I like to get it a little lower than that. All right, let's do the auto land. And there it is. So hopefully I got all that and we got the video. So yeah, I would recommend this to anybody that is a beginner or even if you're an expert, heck, if you just want to fly this in the gym or somewhere, this is very durable and a lot of fun. I would recommend it. So that's the Kumi K200C and I'll put a link to the product under the video with the pricing.